Welcome to September's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is arithmetic slices two subsequence. Given an integer array nums, return the number of all arithmetic subsequences of nums. A sequence of numbers is called arithmetic if it consists of at least three elements and if the difference between any two consecutive elements is the same. For example, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 7, 7, 7, all these are arithmetic sequences because the differences are all going to be the same here. This is 2, this is 0. Here, 1, 1, 2, 5, 7 is not an arithmetic sequence, essentially because there's no real pattern. Um, yeah, so a subsequence is, of an array is a sequence that can be formed by removing some elements, possibly none, of the array. So 2, 5, 10 is going to be a subsequence of this array here. You can see it right here, 2, 5, 10. And you can actually find another one, two, five, ten, as well. Okay, so we can certainly try to go the recursive route and just do a depth first search and check every single path that we can take for our subsequence. But that was my first approach, and it hit a time limit exception. It's because it's just exponential. It's going to be two to the nth power. Now, looking at the length of the nums, we see that it's a thousand, a thousand. So. I think we can make the assumption that we want to go for an n squared solution here. So let's go straight in and see what the algorithm looks like. Say that we had this example here. Um, normally, recall questions like the longest increasing subsequence. What we want to do is check every single uh, sub, uh, not sub array, but sub sequences available to us by using an ending pointer, a pointer that's going to point to the ending index, and a pointer that points to the start index. So what I mean by that is if we had an i, i is going to equal the ending index, and j, checking every single index that comes before that. So if we started with i here, uh, there's no j's before this, so this is going to be nothing. But if we had i here, then we want to check every single j that comes before, like this. Um, when we come here, we want to check j of 2 and j of 4, uh, so on and so forth. And normally, usually, we have a DP solution. We have some sort of array that's going to store information, right? But with this one, we have to store more than just one thing. With longest increasing subsequence, we just want to like store what was the total number. But we also need to remember that it's possible we have different differences that come from before. So what we'll do is instead of just an integer inside these values, we're going to have uh, some sort of dictionary that's going to keep track of the difference as well as the number that came before that. So uh, with this example, we'll have i starting at, at index 1, and we're going to check before that what's the difference between 4 or minus 2. That's going to be 2, right? So we know at least there's going to be a value of 2, um, one, one subsequence here with a difference of two. Now let's check to index two here. Uh, first, we're going to check six minus two. That's going to be four, right? So that's four. Uh, but what about two here? There's also six minus four. That's two. But we can see that two also at that at this index, we also had a difference of two here. So why don't we start accumulating? We'll carry over whatever values in here, and we'll add one because we know at this point we have at least one more subsequence that we can add to this difference of two, right? So this would be two and one plus two. So this would be two. And now we just continue this algorithm down all the way. And what this is going to do is tell us how many uh, subsequences of length two do we have with, with these difference of values. So if we like summed up everything at the very end of all these values, this, that would give us the list, uh, the, the total number of subsequences with a length of two inside of our array, right? But that, that's not good enough because we have to remember there's only three, there has to be at least three elements. Uh, so to avoid that, what we'll do is only add to our total what comes from before. So like here uh, at 10, we're only going to add the numbers that come from before that. That way we don't, we have, we can ensure that it's going to be at least a length of three. So uh, let's just start coding this out and hopefully we'll begin to make sense. Uh, first thing, let's get initialized length of nums. 
and we want to create some sort of lookup, our DP array. Uh, this will be an array with a default dict with integers for blank and range of n, right? Now we also want to have our output, which starts with zero. So what we're going to do is say for i, this is going to be the ending index in range of n. Let's check all the starting indexes. So for j in range of i. So this will be our start index. And this will allow us not to make sure we're checking the same index here. So what are we doing? We want to first calculate the diff between the nums of i, which is the ending index, and the nums of j. So this is going to be the difference. Now to our dp array, let's calculate the dp of i. Uh, this is the ending index. This is going to equal to, well, whatever its difference is, we're going to add at least one. But remember, we want to accumulate here. So this would be dp of the j that we're checking, if there's a value of the difference before that, then we're, we're going to start accumulating like this. Now, finally, to avoid checking only lengths of two subsequences, what we'll do is uh, whatever value is here, we're going to add that to our output. And I realize that's confusing, um, but you could certainly sum up the values and actually subtract the n times n minus 1 divided by 2. You can do that as well, um, but this just seems a lot cleaner. Uh, so let's see what this looks like. And that looks like it's working. I'm going to also print out the dp array just to kind of show what it looks like here. So you can see we have a bunch of dictionaries all in order. And each one of these essentially accumulates the number of subsequences that we've seen with this same value. So with this example, uh, we'll be adding, once we get here, we see that two, right? We're going to add one first, then we get here, we're going to add two, and then we get here, we add three. So that's a total of six. Now as for four, we get four, uh, where there's a length of two here, but here there's actually no four. This gets carried over because uh, we're checking for it, but it's just it's actually not there. Once we four increases to two, then we add the one. So that's going to be seven. So that that's it. Like this is the entire algorithm. And let's go ahead and submit this. And there we go. So time complexity is n squared. Space complexity is also n squared. So I should admit that I did not come up with the solution. It looks really easy and it's very simple, but I think coming up with this is actually very difficult. I tried a lot of variations of this. I knew we had to do some sort of DP solution, uh, but I was trying to carry over a lot of things and it just wasn't working out. Once I saw one of the solutions, I realized uh, this is very clever, but it's also very, very difficult to come up with on the spot. Well, uh, what can we do? I guess we just have to continue and believe, you know, if these questions ever got too easy, then that means you're not learning anything, right? So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.